A seahorse's huge tail defines his strength, and it's just terrible to look into your tank and see that your seahorse's tails have been injured. Tail injuries can happen because of bacterial issues or actual injuries. We can prevent injuries by making sure there are no sharp, jagged rocks or aptasia within the tank, and we can treat if necessary. If you're able to obtain an exotic vet, you will be able to get better medications like Batril. Injecting a seahorse with an antibiotic sounds scary, but it's really not. You merely lift the seahorse halfway out of the water, keeping his head underwater at all times, and inject the seahorse with the exact amount of medication required in the situation. It's actually one of the best ways to treat because they're getting the exact amount and they're getting it exactly where they need it. However, if you cannot obtain an exotic vet, there are other options, so do not fear. Another thing we can do to help with tail injuries is to put bio bandage on the end of the tail. If you lift the tail out of the aquarium and dab the bio bandage on the end, holding it there for a moment to let it dry, and then release the seahorse, this will help prevent infection to the injury. These two seahorses' tails were completely healed using injections of Batril and bio bandage on the actual injury to keep bacteria from causing a secondary issue. If you cannot obtain an exotic vet, there are many good over-the-counter broad-spectrum antibiotics like Furon 2, Triple Sulfa, and Canaplex. And don't forget that just quarantining a seahorse in good fresh salt water and doing many water changes can actually heal the seahorse all on its own. So to prevent and treat tail injuries, we make sure there are no jagged rocks or aptasia within the tank. We try to obtain an exotic vet who can prescribe better medications like Batril, which can be injected, and Diamox, which is very helpful in other issues. And if we cannot get a vet, then we obtain Furon 2, Canaplex, Triple Sulfa, or another broad spectrum antibiotic that's available over the counter. BioBandage is also useful in preventing infections at the injury. The causes of external gas bubble disease in seahorses is widely debated. However, there are two main theories. One is that the pressure, if the pressure of dissolved gases in the water becomes higher than that of atmospheric pressures due to limited places for the gases to escape, then gas supersaturation of the water occurs. One way to make sure that this does not occur in your tank is to make sure that the return of your water to the tank creates a waterfall cascading into the tank and breaking up all of those gases as it hits the water. Another way is to keep the temperatures cooler. Low temperatures with higher pressures keeps those gases dissolved. However, a temperature spike could be the cause of supersaturization of the water because the low temperature with the higher oxygen has to be degassed before it's heated. One way to prevent this issue is to aerate the water before adding it to the tank. Also, don't run a heater along with a chiller. The relationship between CO2 and oxygen in our tanks is very complicated. We just need to make sure that we keep our tank and the water before we add it very aerated and keep the temperatures low. Another way to protect our seahorses from external GBD is to make sure that our tank is tall enough. The hydrostatic pressure at the bottom of a taller tank protects the seahorse from depth-related GBD. Make sure that your tank is greater than 20 inches high. Another theory is that waste CO2 produced by bacteria gets trapped under the seahorse's skin. This would happen when the organics in the tank become really high. You've heard me say repeatedly how important it is to have things like a skimmer 
and an algae scrubber and or a thin sand or bare bottom substrate to deal with these high organics. In this video, you're seeing that my tank that got extremely dirty after my skimmer broke. The organics in the tank were out of control and all of a sudden I noticed that my seahorse's tail had bubbles in the end. I was of course devastated. I replaced the skimmer almost immediately and all of those little things you see floating around in the tank disappeared very quickly. Unfortunately, this seahorse's tail was too far gone and he needed to be treated in a quarantine tank. The tip of his tail was covered in white bubbles and he was no longer able to go after food or swim properly because his tail would rise to the surface. It was also tender and he couldn't hitch well. To treat, I used Diamox or Acetazolamide and Furan 2, which is very, very effective against bacterial issues. When you use Diamox, you need to make sure to add an airline and provide a lot of aeration. The Diamox affects the oxygen in the water of the tank and the seahorse needs extra oxygen. With Furon 2, we know that it is light sensitive and we need to dim the lights. I will discuss the treatment in the comments, but I slowly watched my seahorse's tail completely get better. He's now in the tank, main tank with his girlfriend, living happily ever after. I've not had any more problems from him. In summary, some of the ways that we can prevent external GBD in our seahorses are to make sure that the surface of the water is agitated to break up the gases, keep water at cooler temperatures, aerate water before adding it to the tank, and don't use a chiller in the sump and a heater in the tank. Oh yeah, and number one, keep the tank clean and organic levels low. The most common theory as to the cause of internal GBD or pouch emphysema is that a male seahorse after a pregnancy is unable to expel all of the embryonic tissue and that tissue stays in the pouch where bacteria turns it into an infection. However, I personally can vouch for the fact that internal GBD can be caused by the same things as external. I personally watched my, one of my male seahorses cut his pouch on a rock I saw the white patch form and his poor pouch blow up like a balloon. The old advice to rub on the seahorse's pouch until the bubbles are expelled is outdated. Please do not do this. We've since learned that this can hurt the seahorse's pouch. Instead, try pouch flushes. There are a couple different ways to do a pouch flush, so I'm just going to show you the way that I find easiest. Basically, you'll need a syringe or a pipette, a solution of either fresh salt water Diamox, antibiotic, or a combination of those. And if you can obtain a catheter, that can be helpful. Basically, you wanna pull about one cc into the syringe. You invert the syringe, tap on the sides to release any bubbles. Depress the syringe to release any air from the top, and you'll know you're good when you see the fluid coming out. You insert the syringe into the seahorse's pouch at a downward angle, not straight towards his body, which can hurt him. It should be almost parallel to the body. Once you're inside the pouch, you want to release 0.2 to 0.3 cc's of, in, of the fluid. You'll see it coming out of the pouch. You then press, not rub, on the pouch to release any extra, and you can leave some of the solution in the pouch if it's let, like an antibiotic to help him heal. If the seahorse is nervous or tense, it can help to let him hitch on your pinky finger while you're doing the procedure. We didn't do that in this video because we wanted you to see what was going on. But also, if he resists when you're trying to get into the pouch, please do not push. Try different angles until you can get in easily. For people new to doing pouch flushes, I would advise not using a needle. Use plastic or pipette. You can also cut 
the bubble end of the pipette and attach a catheter, which makes things much easier on someone new. In my case, my seahorse cut his pouch when I was very new to seahorse keeping and I didn't know about antibiotics and Diamox. I used just fresh salt water and it worked. This seahorse didn't end up passing away, but not for years after the pouch flushes and the emphysema. To prevent or treat internal GBD or pouch emphysema, make sure that the tank is tall enough, do pouch flushes with fresh salt water, Diamox, antibiotics, or a combination of these, and never ever rub on the pouch. While pouch emphysema is referred to as internal GBD, true internal GBD affects the body of the seahorse, not just the pouch of the male, and seahorse, or female seahorses are at risk also. It involves the swim bladder overinflating, or most likely a bacterial infection within the seahorse. Internal GBD does not respond well to just Diamox, because Diamox only treats the symptoms, the bubbles. You're more likely to have success treating internal GBD if you either do injections of antibiotics or quarantine the seahorse in a tank with antibiotics added and or the Diamox added. Another way to treat this is to decompress the seahorse at depths of greater than 10 feet, but that's very difficult for the average home aquarist. Your best shot at success is to treat with Diamox and antibiotic in a quarantine tank. This video shows a female who had internal GBD near her egg tubes and was responding to treatment. Unfortunately, she did not make it. We like to show our failures in addition to our successes because this is how we learn from each other. Also, no one should feel badly if they do not successfully treat internal GBD as it's very, very difficult. Because the greater hydrostatic pressure at the bottom of taller tanks can cause the gas and bully to go back to solution and basically protect seahorses from depth-related GBD, and we now know that decompressing the seahorse at greater depths can actually cure internal GBD, it becomes so obvious how important it is to provide seahorses with a taller tank. Please make sure you're putting your seahorses in a tank that is at least three times the height of an adult in the species and at minimum over 20 centimeters. We also learned that to treat internal GBD, we're going to need an antibiotic.